Hey everyone, I am in the bathroom and you can probably hear that it sounds a little bit different in here and that's because I have drywall on the walls. So stay tuned. So if you're new to the channel, I just want to welcome you here and hopefully you'll consider subscribing if you like what you see. Also, check out DIY Apprentice on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. I post lots of pictures and videos on those platforms before I post anything on YouTube. And occasionally I'll post things on those platforms I don't post on YouTube. Also, check out the website at DIYApprentice.com. So this bathroom, as you can hear, sounds a little bit different and that's because I now have drywall on the walls. So what I'm going to talk through in this video is what I did to get the drywall on the walls, some of the obstacles I ran into, and how I overcame those obstacles. So let's get into it. Alright, so let's start with the last minute touches on this wall before I put up the drywall. One thing I forgot is I forgot to move these sconce boxes out a little bit because we changed the depth of the wall. So I had to do that. It took me a couple hours to get this right where this one is level with that one. I also had to cut the stud over here because bringing this forward, this uh, bracket, the bracket right here, was impacting the stud. So I had to cut the stud on both sides here. This sconce box is about two and a half inches from the wall. So we are trying to, we're trying to center everything on the wall and on the vanity that's going to be in here. We have about probably roughly around 28 to 29 inches of space between these two sconce boxes. So we probably could fit probably about a 26 inch mirror if we wanted to do that. Uh, we are thinking about going with the frameless mirror and possibly mounting the sconces on the mirror. So stay tuned for that. We'll talk about that when we get to that stage where we're actually putting up the mirror. So I will give you a little bit of a sneak peek at the sconces we're looking at putting up. Here's one of them. I'll go up like that. This is the... So that's what it would look like. So we're hoping that'll look pretty good. So this wall is all done. I did have to sand down a few studs. And I did have to shim right over here in one spot. That's about it. This wall was pretty much good to go. All right, so let's talk about this front wall. Now, there, this was a little bit of an issue because, first of all, you can see right here, I replaced this stud. This is a trimmer stud that goes under the header. And the one that was here before was actually bowing really badly at the bottom. So I replaced that. And I have to remember that this is also not plumb. So when I go to put a door up here later on, I'm going to have to make sure that I don't get a door that's too wide to fit in this opening because this is really badly out of plumb. The other side is just fine though. If you look in this corner, I'm going to be putting the drywall up on this wall first because first of all I can get a gun in this way to set the screws but also if I put the drywall up on this wall first, on this right wall, then I have very little material left to put the drywall up on this front wall. And so what that means, I'd have to put up a sister or put up some drywall clips so I could put this drywall up on the front wall. I've got several spots where I put shims up. So I just use a 2x4, cut slices on the miter saw, and tack those up with brad nails. So that looks okay. All right, so let's take a look at this last wall here. This is the left wall. And I had to do quite a bit of work on this wall that I did not expect to have to do. The stud in the corner was bowing. I could kind of look down the wall this way and I could tell that it was bowing. So I had actually the six foot level. The six foot level actually fit from this end all the way to the other end perfectly. I had to take the caps off the end of the level, but it fit perfectly. So I could get a really good gauge of how flat this wall was. And just like I've done all along, all I did was pretty much start at the bottom, come up a foot at a time, and check for where I needed to sand or shim. So I've got several shims. There's one example there. Uh, I had to shave, like I said, this stud down. I ended up using the oscillating tool to get this stud in the corner. So that was the only way I could reach this without actually sanding down this one at the same time. And just like what I've done throughout this whole project, I've been marking C's on the ceiling. So you can see one, C right there, I think. Yeah, right there. So that stands for center of the stud. So I've got that all along this wall here and every other wall too. I'm gonna skip this stud because this one is pretty far out and the spacing from here to here I think is somewhere around I want to say about 18 inches so I should be okay with skipping that one stud. 
And one last thing I need to do on this wall before I close it up is I need to put the mud ring back on this electrical box. One other thing, I need to make sure that when I install the drywall that I don't put a seam right here in this corner. So I don't want to have a, a sheet of drywall in here and then start another sheet across the top and then do another in the corner. Uh, I, throughout this house, there are seams like that and we've got cracks. So what I'm going to do is put one sheet all the way across here and then we'll cut the opening out of that one sheet. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is take a measurement, and as you saw with the tile backer board material, I took three measurements equidistant from each other just to make sure that uh, I accounted for any changes in the wall. And that is about, looks like uh, 59 and three quarters. If you remember at the floor, the measurement was 59 and seven eighths. All right, so since we know we're going to hang the drywall horizontally, let's talk about placement of the drywall. Now, I haven't done much drywall hanging myself, especially when it, you're involving electrical boxes. So I'm going to kind of talk through this and see if it makes sense to you here. But basically, if I measure down from the ceiling at 48 inches, that's where our first sheet would end. Because we're talking again about four by eight sheets of drywall. And that spot right there is really not good, I don't think, for mudding and taping. So I thought, okay, well, let's measure up from the floor instead. That would end right there. Again, probably not a good spot for mudding and taping since we'd have to mud and tape around this electrical box. So probably not a good idea. So my thought was to have the drywall in somewhere in this area. What I did instead, I said, okay, the one thing I do know of that I've read is I don't want to have a taper at the floor because we have to fill that in and be able to install a baseboard trim later. So I don't want to have a taper down there, which means I need to cut off about three inches of the drywall. So that puts us at about 45 inches. So I said, okay, let's measure up from the floor instead. So 45 inches is right there, then add a half inch to bring this up off the floor puts us right there at 45 and a half. So if I measure down from the ceiling down to this same spot, that puts us at 46 and an eighth. So that seems to be a really good option. I could then mud and tape right in here, right along the wall there, and that would be just fine. So that's what I'm gonna do. All right, so this is the product that I'll be installing. This is one half inch Dens Armor Plus by Georgia Pacific. This is a moisture resistant drywall. This is not your standard paper drywall. So it does not have paper on the outside like your regular drywall. This actually has fiberglass. All right, so I've got a brand new blade on my utility knife. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the drywall now. So I figured I'd give you a close look at the den shield here. You see it's quite a bit different from regular drywall. We've got fiberglass on the outside and then it looks like another layer of fiberglass on this side and then this is a gypsum core. Got my rasp. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this end off here because remember we have to have, uh, I think this measurement was 46 and an eighth. That's our top piece. And then our bottom piece was around 45 and a half. See if we can get this to break off cleanly here. As I'll discuss in a minute, I start out by cutting around the electrical junction boxes with the roto zip and a guide point bit after partially attaching the upper board to the framing. Now, to make the cuts on the floor in the garage purely based on precise measurements, I would measure from the ceiling and the wall, which are level and plumb respectively, to the boxes, taking into account the 1 inch gap between the board and the wall. A 1 inch gap around the boxes seemed adequate. Also, if you're not using the roto-zip method, a couple wood support blocks might be useful. All 
right, so I've got the two electrical boxes cut out here, and you can tell they, they went a little bit rough. Uh, so what happened, I started to use a roto zip on this first box. I used a guide point bit here. And as I started to cut around here, it started to dig into the box. So I think I was pressing just a little bit too hard. So also, as I started to cut around the box, I hit one of these locator nubs with the roto zip and it threw it off. So one of the things you can do, as I've read, you can take the utility knife and just slice those locator uh, tabs off the side of the box. So you can trace around it more freely. So I ended up taking this board down and I actually cleaned it up in the garage and then brought it back in the bathroom. So not the prettiest looking thing, but it'll work for us here. Um, I also sliced the tab off on the side over here because it was pushing the box back in the wall a little bit too much. And we still have to mud and tape this area. And so this is going to come up a little bit higher than it's currently looking right now because this is actually a beveled area of the drywall. Uh, I also changed out this mud ring. I was noticing that the box was sitting a little bit too far back, or at least the uh, mud ring was sitting too far back in the wall. So I had a half inch mud ring before, I changed this out for a 5 a's. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and start putting my screws in. I'm just going to use the impact today. I was going to break out the screw gun, but I don't really feel like using that. So I've got the opening cut out here. Uh, this was a little bit of a challenge. I started to use the drywall saw to cut right here and about an inch and a half in I realized that that was not going to work very well because it started to crumble a little bit. So I immediately switched over to uh, the roto zip reluctantly and you probably can tell I've got a lot of drywall dust all over me. It made a big mess in here. All right, so now we've got the top board in. We're going to go ahead and put in our bottom board. So I'm going to put one board in on this side and another piece on that side instead of trying to span across the whole opening here. That wouldn't make much sense. So we'll go ahead and do that next. Since I don't have a drywall lifter tool, I used a wonder bar to carefully lift the lower drywall panel tight to the upper panel. I then installed a few screws to hold it in place. All right, so I've got the top and the bottom boards installed. Screws are installed at 12 inches on center. Now I do have 16 inch on center stud spacing so I could have gone 16 inches on center with my screw spacing but I decided to go with 12 inches on center instead. Ugh, not again. See links in the description below. Comment, like, share and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to check us out on social media. And thanks for watching.